let's do some examples where we have to find the equation of a given graph. So let's say someone gives you a graph. It looks just like this. You have your xy plane and you have a line going like this. And what do we know about this line? Well, let's say they tell us that the y-intercept is 2 and the x-intercept is negative 4. How could I find the equation of this line? Well, let's remind ourselves that every linear equation you can write in the form y equals mx plus b. That's your slope y-intercept form. Okay, so what do we know so far? Well, I know the y-intercept is 2. So I could say, okay, b is equal to 2. That's a good piece of information. And I could also find the slope. How do you find the slope? Well, it's rise over run. So all you need is two points to find this. Well, we have two points, right? We have a point here and we have a point here. That's good enough. What's the rise between these two points? Well, you go up from this point to this point, that's an increase in height of two, right? Because here you're at zero, up here you're at a height of two. So you go up two, so your rise is two. What about the run? Well, from here to here, you move four to the right. So your run is four. So two over four, which is a half. So I know my B, I know my M. I can write my equation as y equals one half x plus two. And that's your final answer. Okay, let's do another example. Let's say you're given a graph, looks something like this, where this point here is at three, and this point here is at negative one. So we set it up the same way, y equals mx plus b. What's my b value? Well, I know b is going to be negative 1, because that's the y-intercept. Uh, and what else do we know? Well, if you want, you could figure it out the same way we did the last question, where you find the slope between the two points and use that for m. Or we have another option. What you could do is you could plug in a point into the equation to solve for m. And what I mean by that is, let's say you look at this point here. That point is 3, 0. That's the point. So I have an x value and a y value. I could plug those values into this equation along with my b value and then solve for m. So I don't even need to find the slope by saying rise over run. I can just plug in a point and it'll give me the slope. Let me show you what I mean. 3, 0, 0 is your y value. So you say 0 equals m we don't know. x is 3. So m times 3 plus what's my b value? Well, it's negative 1. So I'm just going to say minus 1. Now let's solve for m. Move the negative 1 to the other side. 1 is equal to 3m. Divide both sides by 3. Make those 3s cancel. m is equal to a third. So your slope is 1 over 3. So your final answer for the equation will be y equals 1 third x minus 1. Just like that. Now, of course, you could use the other method. You could find the slope between these two points. Say, oh, I went up one unit into the right three units. So rise over run is 1 over 3 you get the same answer. So it's completely up to you how you want to tackle these questions. Okay, one more. Say I have something like this, and I have a line just like that, and the points that I'm given are a little bit different because they don't include the intercepts. Let's say I have a point here that's negative 3, 5, and I'll have a point over here at 6, negative 2. And now I have to find the equation of the line. How can I do this? Well, with two points, it's easiest to start by finding your slope, right? y equals, and you can do rise over run, but I'm going to use the equation because the numbers are a little bit trickier to figure out for this one, maybe. And it'll be good practice as well. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So my y2 and x2 are coming from the second point, this point down here on the right, 6, negative 2. So for y2, I have negative 2 minus y1. My y1 is 5, so minus 5. My x2 is 6 minus x1, which is negative 3. So minus negative 3, that's the same as saying plus 3. So you can just write it like that. And what do I get? Negative 5 minus 2, that's negative 7. 6 plus 3 is 9. So my slope is negative 7 over 9. So I got a negative number. That makes sense because you can see this is going down as you go to the right. So of course you should get a negative slope. Um, but that still leaves the issue of the y-intercept, right? What is this point here? My b value. What is my b? I need that because y equals 
m x plus b. I have my m, but I need the b. So what do I do? Well, one possible solution is I'm just going to plug in my m. I can plug in an x and a y from either of these points, whichever one I want, and then I can just solve for b. Right? It'll be one equation, one unknown. I can solve for b. So let's do that. Let's say I want to plug in this point here. So 6, negative 2. So negative 2 is my y value. My m is negative 7 over 9. I know that. And the x is 6. So now I have all these numbers. I have b. All I have to do is solve for b. So negative 2 is equal to, well, negative 7 times 6 over 9. Uh, if you want, that will simplify to negative 14 over 3 because 6 over 9 is 2 thirds and so 2 times 7 is 14 and that will be 14 over 3. So you can do that however you want. Um, and then you can move this number to the other side so you'll have negative 2 plus 14 over 3 is equal to b. Okay, how do I add these together? Well you have to remember your fraction rules, right? Negative 2 is the same as negative 6 over 3 and this way you have a common denominator between the two numbers. Negative 6 plus 14, that's the same as 14 minus 6, which is just 8 over 3 is equal to b. Now you have your y-intercept. So your final answer will be y equals your slope, which was negative 7 over 9, times x, plus your b-value, which is 8 over 3. So that 8 thirds value we got, you could label that on the graph if you wish. This is 8 over 3 is this point right here, which 8 divided by 3 is a little bit more than 2, right? It's between 2 and 3 on the graph.